So let's get started. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. It's 5.30 already, almost, and we hope that this is going to be a great wrap-up for your second day at Next. My name is Zeno Ways, and I'm a product manager on the G Suite team. And I'm Vishnu Savaji, also a PM on the same team. And Vishnu and I are very aware that we're standing between you and Happy Hour that was publicized just now, but we've promised to make it worthwhile. In the next hour, we're going to demonstrate ways that G Suite apps like Docs, Sheets, Slides, Gmail, and Drive as well can help you close more deals in as little time as possible. And that just means doing your best work, but a lot faster. As a professional in a sales organization, you're always striving to boost your efficiency, increase conversions, sell more. Things like presentations or pitch decks like these are just tools to help you achieve that goal. Similarly, emailing back and forth, setting up meetings are just means and not the end. But unfortunately, these means take up a lot of your time. In fact, we know that on average, reps spend only one third of their time selling. The remaining two thirds are spent mainly on two things, creating presentations, pushing boxes around on a slide deck, and doing administrative work like communicating and setting up, setting up meetings. Two thirds of your time is not spent with your clients, not spent prospecting new clients. And product managers on G Suite, like Vishnu and me, we all want to build products that help you avoid time drains. Basically, we want your time to look more like this. We want you to spend more time with your clients, less time on your administrative work. To do that, we actually needed to understand what your day as a sales professional looks like. So we looked at what an average sales cycle looks like. We saw six main stages. For the sales reps in this room, you're probably more familiar with this cycle than we are, because we're not in sales. But we studied it pretty closely. We identified time drains within each stage, everything from the prospecting stage to the stage where you close the deal with your client. These time drains individually look small. But in aggregate, they actually keep you from spending time with your customers. Vishnu will now walk us through the sales cycle and explain how G Suite apps that I mentioned earlier would help you avoid these time drains. To illustrate these tools, uh, we thought we'd walk through a, a scenario. So I want to introduce Selena. She's an account manager for Rainier, which is an outdoor adventure company based in Seattle. Rainier makes a lot of products, but they're very excited about their new launch of a brand new water bottle called Fresh. So Selena is now going to go and work with a lot of clients across the US, retailers, and she's going to make a bunch of content to go pitch to these companies. So we're going to focus on what she would do in the first two stages of the cycle. Here are some things she might be busy with. She might be busy with finding the right set of contacts to email. These contacts are in some separate CRM tool. She's customizing pitch decks for this client. She's making sure all the content that she pitches is actually up to date. And she's not doing this alone. She's working with a team of people at our company. Without G Suite, a simple task like prospecting or leading or emailing a client can be messy. You might delay responding to an email when you're on the go because it's hard to get work done. And you might be constantly context switching between CRM tools and your email. Speaking of context switching, how many of you look at a screen that looks like this every day, something with like 10 tabs open at a time? That's a lot of people. OK, 15 tabs. It's still a lot of people. OK, 50 tabs, 5-0. Uh, any browser. You can add up all of them. So we should, we should talk at happy hour of this. I want to know how you get any work done. So we know that context switching and having multiple tabs open is a real problem. And in fact, there are only two real tabs that are relevant to Selena right now. And it's these two. It's her email and ProsperWorks, which happens to be her CRM app. That's why in Gmail, we wanted to bring your CRM tools right to your inbox. And as we announced earlier, there are new Gmail add-ons coming. And this allows you to actually work within the context of your email. It's going to work with ProsperWorks. And we are actually going to open a developer preview soon. So watch out for that link. This is going to work on both desktop and mobile. 
So Selena here can search for contacts saved in her ProsperWorks account, and she can reach out to them within the context of her email. Now, the next thing she's going to do is make a custom pitch deck. And this should be easy. There's probably a format that she's supposed to stick to. Now, in the past, you might have emailed PowerPoint templates back and forth. I hear that that's a pretty popular product from a decade ago. Um, <laughs> you might be pinging or trying to figure out who to ping to get this template. You might be pointed to a, a shared site that might be down half the time. So you're just wasting a lot of time, and all you want to do is get started. In Google Docs last year, we launched custom templates. And this allows templates to be centralized and broken down by your use case. There's also not a lot of setup work required. Once your admin sets this up, trusted users in your domain can upload new templates, and they can be easily added. And with just a couple of clicks, they're readily available for your company to use. So Selena doesn't have to ping her marketing team. She doesn't have to worry about finding the right sites page. And they're just ready to go. We're actually going to walk through a demo of this. Sure, let's switch to the demo. All right, so Selena is going to start on the Google Slides homepage. This is where Selena sees all of the pitch decks she's created in the past. At the very top, she actually sees a list of templates that the Google, Google Slides team has made available to all customers. But what's actually compelling for enterprise users is the template gallery that's specific to the domain that the person is in. In this case, Selena is part of Rainier. And in 2017, Rainier's goal was to actually sell as many fresh water bottles as possible. They wanted their entire sales force to focus on distributing these water, water bottles with as many retailers as possible. So they went ahead and made available this template that can be used by everyone in the sales force, and they can each customize it based on their client. And that's just what one slide deck looks like. But other teams at Rainier actually provided templates for their finance teams. They also provided for the user design team. So as a Rainier employee, I can go here to the template gallery, the domain template gallery, and pick the slide deck that's relevant to me. Selena is prepping for her meeting in Chicago with her customer Gianna, a, a nationwide retailer. So she goes and picks the Rainier Fresh 2017 pitch deck. When she opens it, she sees a great starting point with slides that are relevant to Rainier, showing the mission statement, and also some placeholders that each sales rep is supposed to fill out and replace. There are some details about the specific opportunity that the sales rep is looking for, and even some monetary numbers that they need to fill in. As you may guess, on Google Slides, we also have a solution to scale the process of actually customizing these templates. So let's switch back to the slides. Now, you're probably worried, as Selena is, about finding and replacing all those placeholders. So she started with the template, but she's going to go refer to different tools again, copy and paste all this information. And she's going to do this you know, every time she needs to go make a pitch. So she's going to make mistakes. And she's going to have to go find the deck again, fix the mistake. So it's very manual. It wastes a lot of time doing this. So again, we want to fight repetitive and manual tasks. So last year, we launched a new Slides API that allows you to do exactly this. It allows you to programmatically customize presentations. And we also launched several uh, integrations. So one of them is uh, ProsperWorks. This is live in production today. And with a single click, you can actually go find each opportunity, customize a template, and have a pitch deck ready to use. So again, I don't want to just talk about this. So let's switch to the demo machine, and Zena will show you what this looks like. All right, so this is Selena inside her CRM tool, ProsperWorks. She has a lot of opportunities that she's tracking with her various clients. She's now working on her deal with Gianna, so she looks for that opportunity, the fresh 2017 opportunity with Gianna. In ProsperWorks, there are a lot of things that can be tied and attached to your client or opportunity. One of them is a pitch deck. Selena is about to start making this pitch deck that she's going to present in Chicago. And she actually uses the Google Slides integration. This is a tool that ProsperWorks built using the APIs that Vishnu mentioned. So she selects it. ProsperWorks asks for a template. This is the template that ProsperWorks is going to use to customize with Gianna's opportunity. 
And remember, this is a template that the marketing team made available to the entire Salesforce at Rainier. Selects it here, customizes the name of the, custom, of the customized pitch deck that she's going to produce. So this is Rina, her contact at Gianna. And she hits Create. What's happening in the background is that ProsperWorks is replacing all the placeholders we saw earlier with information that's accurate from Selena's CRM tool. So right now, the presentation is ready and saved. Selena switches back to Drive. And this is a presentation that was just created right now. If we open it here, we actually see that all the placeholders were replaced. We can see the name of the company or the client that Selena is working with, her contact, Rina, details about the opportunity that were all saved in CRM tool, and even some monetary values. This is pretty powerful, because in the absence of this tool, what Selena had to do would copy and paste between ProsperWorks and Google Slides. And she would have to do it for tens, or for tens of customers and maybe making mistakes along the way. So now all this information is ready for Gianna to go and take this slide deck to her customer in Chicago. It's pretty slick. All right, let's switch back to the slides. So to quickly recap, with the Slides API, your organization can make a custom workflow that incorporates data from several sources that can be in G Suite, in a CRM tool, in a third-party data warehouse. And you can programmatically bring this all together into Google Slides. Now, another common problem you may have is that you're talking about a lot of data in these decks. And very, more often than not, you're creating charts and you're adding them to these presentations. So you'll have the same chart that's embedded in all of these hundreds of thousands of documents. And you might get a ping from the analyst team that says, hey, remember when we said we can make that bottle for $5? Well, it turns out it costs $800. And so that's ridiculous, obviously. But the problem now is that you've got to go find each of these charts and all of these decks and actually update them. But really, the source of truth is still in that sheet. So what we launched last year in Docs is the ability to actually update all of these charts when they've been embedded in all of these decks. And we're actually going to switch to a demo again. Great. So let's see this in action. So Selena realized there's another data point that would be so powerful for her pitch at Gianna. They've been um, partnering with Rainier for a while. And Black Friday sales would be a great data point to show how water bottles sell well at their stores. So she's got this spreadsheet that was actually created by the analyst team. And it's tracking the sales of different items, different Rainier items at Gianna. So this is a great chart that she created. So she thinks, I'm going to present this to show that water bottles sell well. But of course, she's not going to present a spreadsheet in her meeting. So she's copying into her slide deck. So I'm just copying and pasting. And she sees this option, an option to link the chart. What this means is that the data is actually going to stay in the source of truth, which is the spreadsheet. Anytime an analyst changes the number there, it would actually update the chart in her slide deck. So let me go ahead and paste this chart, place it right here. Let me now pretend to be an analyst who decides to change this number because realizes that they entered it wrong. See the chart now updating. This line got bigger. Now, they don't need to ping everyone who used this data. Because Selena actually, before she presents, she sees that there's an update bu button prompting her to update the data and get the most fresh, up-to-date data into her slide deck. By hitting this, the chart will actually update with all the latest numbers from the spreadsheet. Yet another example where you don't have to worry about making mistakes again. Let's switch back to the slides. Now, behind the scenes, Selena is doing a lot of analysis. She's estimating each opportunity. She's calculating sales projections. She's working with large data sets from previous years because she's trying to make these projections for future years. She has this problem where she knows what insights she needs to get, but she just doesn't know how. And figuring out that how takes a lot of time. This is why in G Suite, we want to bring machine learning and intelligence into our products. The goal here is to really empower you with tools where you know what you want to do, and you just know how to do it. And we'll basically figure out the how. One of the products is Google Sheets. Last year, we expanded on our Explore tool in Google Sheets. We can now suggest charts by recognizing patterns and extracting interesting trends in your data. This is pretty cool. You can even ask questions in language that makes sense to you. 
This is something that no other spreadsheet tool out there offers. You can find features like this in separate BI products, but they're expensive, and we brought it all in just one place in Sheets. So let's again demo this. To demonstrate this, we're going back to that spreadsheet with the data from the Black Friday sales. I see the Explore button is glowing, so I see what it has for me. What we see here are actually insights that are pre-populated. And there's a search box that I can use to search for certain insights that I'm looking for. These are not your typical queries. Those are human-readable insights. So even if someone doesn't know how to write queries in a spreadsheet, they can still use it. So let's see what we have examples here. Um, I can look for a manufacturer with the lowest customer rating. So it's pulling here that this data.co that has the lowest customer rating. And it's actually showing me what the customer rating is. I can drop it into a slide deck or a spreadsheet. This might be a short question with one answer. But the formula behind it is actually pretty complicated. This is what Selena would have had to type in order to pull that insight. And that takes a bit of knowledge about how to merge columns together. And it's just faster. It's literally two clicks. What you can also see are some visualized insights, charts that Selena can actually drop into her, her spreadsheet or copy and paste into a slide deck. For example, this slide that this chart she just created can actually be created with one click. And here it is. It's pretty cool. Let's switch back to the slides. Now, we know that the impact of this is pretty incredible. About one in three people who use spreadsheets have no idea how to construct a formula. And you just saw that formula. I don't know how to construct that. This is a perfect example that computers are quite good at. So we've brought the power of natural language processing into Sheets so that we can convert your sentence into the right formula and give you the answer right there. Sheets is not the only product where we brought intelligence. We brought machine intelligence to several G Suite products. Another recent example is quick access in Drive, which is now available in Team Drives. What we're able to do is learn from how you and your team work together, and we can understand what's relevant to you at different points in the day or different days in the week. So given that, when you take out your phone and you open up Drive, you go to Team Drive, we can actually recommend content that's trending and important. Our goal, again, is to make it seamless for teams to get what they need. Impact, again, pretty incredible. It's being used for about to close to 40% of file opens. And for each file open, we're saving you 10 seconds of time. These savings add up. And obviously, the bigger, the bigger your team is, the bigger these time savings are. So speaking of teams, Selena is working with a team. She's collaborating on this deck uh, with a set of people at her company. Did someone say real-time collaboration? I thought I heard real-time. <laughs> All right. So thanks to real-time collaboration, she doesn't have to send various versions of this deck back and forth. Um, in the past, I've created drafts, and I've named it uh, draft one, draft two, draft final, draft final for real. No, for real this time. No, let's go back five days. Sorry, let's do that again. It's painful. But this is how real-time collaboration works in Google Slides. They're working on the deck together all at the same time making changes all at the same time. This document is super active. You'll see that they're adding comments, they're resolving comments, they're creating threaded conversations. It's pretty powerful. It, it really changes how teams work. It changes how companies work. It means that projects get completed in days instead of weeks. And you know, we want to bring this impact to as many people as possible. And Zena's going to talk more about how we plan to do this. Great. So as Vishnu said, we wanted to bring the productivity tools that we demo today in docs, sheets, and slides to everyone, even if they don't use Google Drive. What this means is that we want to give customers access to these tools, even if they use a different storage provider than Drive. How many of you here have worked at organizations, or even currently work at organizations, where you store your files outside Google Drive? I know I've worked in the past at organizations like this. Great. Well, previously, if you worked at one of these companies, you could actually you couldn't use any of the Google Docs features we showed you. But now you can still benefit from all these great tools while benefiting from third-party storage providers and their workflow tools as well. So last year, we announced our first partner in this effort, in the storage integration effort with Box. 
And earlier at Next, we announced a new integration with Citrix. We're working with Citrix to allow our joint customers for Google Docs and Citrix to actually bring their Docs files and store them to Citrix and also leverage powerful workflow productivity features like ShareFile and their e-signature features. So if Selena's organization hypothetically uses Citrix, she could work in Sheets, Docs, and Slides. But she can still take advantage of Citrix's built-in approval workflows like ShareFile e-signature. All right, so Selena so far has used Gmail coupled with her CRM tool with Gmail add-ons to communicate with her existing and new clients. She identified the needs by leveraging intelligence features in Sheets. She visualized these insights with charts that she embedded into slides. And she also collaborated effectively with the rest of her team with real-time collaboration. Before she presents the offer, she's looking to change the layout of a couple of her slides. And I'm sure a lot of you have been in Selena's shoes, pushing pixels around. And you probably spent more, times doing, more time doing that, making the content look good, than thinking about what the story of your slides should be. But we don't want it to be that way in Google Slides. And that's why, I, that's why we built intelligence features in Google Slides, just like we did in Google Sheets. So what you can do is just drop in your content, text, or visuals on a slide. And with a couple of clicks, you'll have slides that actually look so good, people are going to think that you hired a design agency for them. And as before, let's see this in action. Let's switch to the demo. All right, so we have a pretty good looking slide here, but I think I have a pretty good design sense. I'm going to try to touch this up myself. I love the color gray, and I also love the color, uh, hmm, let's go with orange. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. I like this maroon thing in the corner, so I'm going to make this match that. That looks pretty good. What do you think, Sena? I don't know. I'm seeing a few people cringe. All right, <laughs> that's hurtful. Um, let's switch to this slide. When I ex open the Explore tool, you'll see that we have an amazing number of high-quality design suggestions. Much better. And the reason they're high-quality is because we actually had a big team of designers at Google hand-curate and hand-make thousands of designs that go in the product. And with the power of machine intelligence, we're able to look at your slide, we're able to pull from a subset of these design suggestions, and with just one click, you can apply it. As you can see, there's an incredible amount of detail. If you look at this shape, it's semi-transparent. I have no idea how to make a circle that's so perfect in slides with a text box in the center of it. It's, it's pretty cool. I'm going to try something here. I'm going to add another image to the slide. So let's say that Selena wants to add an image of a dog on a hike. Pretty reasonable combination. So I'm going to add the image. And what you'll see here is the suggestions have refreshed in about a second. And with just a single click, you're again ready to go out on the road. The Explore tool that Vishnu just demoed, if we can switch back to the slides, was so compelling because it really does save time. We've seen that people save two thirds of the time that they would otherwise spend designing slides. So even if design is not part of your expertise as a sales professional, professional, you can end up with beautiful presentations that you can be proud of and to present to your clients. And this is all done with a couple of clicks. Now, we know that another problem is to find high-quality visuals and diagrams in order to communicate certain messages to your clients. And here at Next, we are happy to announce that the same add-on framework that's available in Docs and Sheets today is coming to Google Slides. And with the upcoming Slides add-ons, we're going to bring powerful third-party tools like Balsamic, Lucidchart, and Adobe Stock in order to enable you to beef up these presentations and pitch decks. And here, too, our goal is to make you more productive by helping you avoid context switching. So let's walk through how the Adobe Stock add-on will look like soon. Selena will actually start in Google Slides to browse through add-ons are available in our store. And if she was looking for high-quality stock images, Adobe Stock is a great place for that. She adds the Adobe Stock add-on to Google Slides, and it appears in a side nav experience like what you see here. She's able to browse through a vast collection of high-quality images within Adobe Stock. 
She can even browse icons or illustrations. And when she finds the image that she wants to add to her slide deck, she has the option to either preview it in the slide deck or purchase it through her Adobe stock account. So now, not only does she have great designs that Vishnu demonstrated just now, but she also has high quality images from third party providers who are specialized in this. Now, while presenting the compelling pitch decks to her customer Gianna and various other retailers, Selena actually opens up the floor for some questions. Putting a Q&A feature in slides enables presenters to not distract themselves by getting questions throughout the talk, but actually maintain engagement within the audience. And because I want you to be a little more engaged with the rest of this talk, I'm going to turn on this feature right now. All right, so with a couple clicks, I've actually turned on this feature. And you see this, the URL at the top of the slides. And it's going to stay here for the next few slides. You can go to this URL and submit your question. At the end, Vishnu and I will actually see the questions that were submitted. We can see them real time. You can even vote on other people's questions. So the best questions get upvoted. Now, while you submit questions, we're going to continue with our presentation. Now, remember Selena's client, Gianna, the one in Chicago? They're actually pretty sold on Selena's proposal. They want to carry these state-of-the-art water bottles in their stores. But before they sign the contract, they want to resolve just a few issues. And that will require Selena to share a draft agreement with an external collaborator, or a client in this case. If you remember earlier in the presentation, Vishnu told us about how Selena collaborated internally with her team. Each time, she was able to decide what kind of view options she wants to give her teammates. She can give them view-only rights or edit rights so they can actually help her with the slide deck. But Selena actually goes through a different thought process when she's sharing a file externally. It could be pretty nerve-wracking. There are some extra sensitive information in the agreement. So Selena wants to be conservative about what the client can do with the file once she shares it with them. She can give them view-only access. But what's so powerful in Google Docs is that she can prevent her external client, Gianna, from further downloading this file and forwarding it to others. This is something that doesn't apply in the world outside cloud, because in the world outside cloud, you attach the file in an email. Once you hit send, the recipient can do whatever they want with the file. They can download it and send it to other people. For certain clients, she can even set permissions that expire after a period of time. So she knows she's going to be in, in Chicago for a week. That's when she wants to collaborate with her client. She can set it for seven days only. Google Docs just strives to give you full control over the sharing access controls that you have for your files. And what's great is that this is actually all done within a, a couple of clicks, and it's pretty slick UI. So how about we demo this? Switch to the demo. Great. So as you see here, this is the final contract that Selena's drafted. And if you go to the sharing dialog, you see, you see that she's shared it with a couple of people. And with just one click, she can set it to an expire within seven days. And with that, she's pretty confident about sharing this file. Great. So let's switch back to the slides. So once Selena shared the file, her client Gianna is ready to collaborate. And the old-fashioned way of collaborating with files, sending them back and forth, as Vishnu ex has explained earlier, is not the case in Google Docs. With Google Docs, Selena can collaborate with external clients in similar ways that she, ex she collaborates with internal clients. But we know collaborating is different than negotiating. When you're negotiating, you also want to put suggested comments, accept them, maybe also reject them. This is otherwise known as redlining. And soon you'll also be able to accept or reject all changes at once. So now that the open questions have been answered, both parties have done crafting the agreement, it's time to sign that contract. This brings us to the last phase of our sales cycle. Now, the G Suite ecosystem is full of partners who are actually specialized and have years of experience in certain areas. We know that there are great approval workflows out there and e-signature 
uh, workflows out there. And we want you to be able to use them, even if you use Google Docs. And one of, one of the many uh, e-signature partners is DocuSign. And it's a recommended for G Suite partner. And it has more than 100 million users in 188 countries. Last year, the team at DocuSign announced an Android add-on. And this year, here at Next, we're very excited to announce that DocuSign is soon integrated, even, integrating even further with G Suite. We're pre-announcing their upcoming add-on in Google Docs. And this is what it will look like. When you're done editing a document, you can actually kick off the e-signature workflow in the sidebar here in Google Docs. You can specify who will be signing. And you can send Google Docs through DocuSign at the end of the flow. So to recap, what we did here is bring powerful tools like DocuSign to you in Google Docs and save you time and reduce context switching. And that brings us to the end of Selena's sales cycle. And the water bottle apparently is going to be distributed in more retailers than ever. And as you saw, there are real-time collaboration tools. There are some intelligence features in, built into G Suite that can help you avoid time drains. Vishnu and I want you to go from here and check out even more tools that we couldn't cover in this talk. You can find out more about G Suite in the G Suite Learning Center. The URL is over there. You can also hear from our G Suite customers telling them how G Suite worked best for them. And that would be at the Transformation Gallery, the URL over there. If you're more about trying things out yourself, less about reading on a website, you can actually pull out your mobile device, open the Sheets app, and try out the Sheets Explore tool that brings all of Google's intelligence power into an app, a productivity app like Google Sheets.